Chemical Equilibrium, Part 1 Introduction to Equilibrium Throughout these equilibrium videos, be prepared to discover the characteristics of an equilibrium system. This introductory video will focus on how and why a system comes to equilibrium. Future videos will focus on how to perform equilibrium calculations, solve equilibrium problems, and predict how a system at equilibrium will respond to stresses like changes in concentration, pressure, or temperature. In stoichiometric calculations, we often must assume that a chemical reaction proceeds to completion once all the limiting reactant has been used up to form the products. In reality, however, many chemical reactions do not proceed to completion. These reactions are said to be reversible reactions because some of the products react to reform the reactants. Reversible reactions proceed until the system reaches equilibrium. Equilibrium is achieved once the concentrations of all the reactants and products remain constant over time. Even a chemical system that appears to have gone to completion is just a system at an equilibrium that favors the formation of products much, much more than the formation of reactants. That is, a system for which the so-called equilibrium position is said to lie far to the right. This crude animation models a sealed container of 10 gaseous NO2 molecules which combine to form into O4 molecules over time. Since this is a reversible reaction, we'll see that some of the N2O4 molecules formed will decompose back into two NO2 molecules as the reaction progresses. Both the forward and the reverse reaction will continue until a chemical equilibrium is established. In this model, once the equilibrium is established, four NO2 molecules and three N2O4 molecules are present, and the concentrations of those molecules will remain constant over time. Chemical equilibrium is considered a dynamic equilibrium because even though it appears as though the reaction has stopped, the reactants are still forming products and the products are still reforming the reactants. At a molecular level, there is still much activity, but there is no net change to the reactants and products concentrations. As the reaction begins, the forward reaction rate is high, and with no products yet formed, the reverse reaction rate is zero. As the reaction proceeds, the rate of the forward reaction decreases as the rate of the reverse reaction increases. Once the forward reaction rate is equal to the reverse reaction rate, the system is at equilibrium. Note that once the system has reached equilibrium, the reaction rates are not zero, because it is a dynamic equilibrium. Consider the reaction of water vapor and carbon monoxide gas to form hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide gas. The double-headed arrow shown here signifies that this is a reversible reaction. As the reaction proceeds, the water and carbon monoxide concentrations decrease, and the hydrogen and carbon dioxide concentrations increase. Once the system reaches equilibrium, water and carbon monoxide are forming hydrogen and carbon dioxide just as fast as hydrogen and carbon dioxide are forming water and carbon monoxide. Since those rates are now equal, the concentrations of water, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide remain constant. Both of these conditions exist for a system at equilibrium. Also note that while an equilibrium system's reactant concentrations may become very low, they never reach zero. This is what occurs when a reaction appears to go to completion because the equilibrium position lies far to the right. Once the system is at equilibrium, what would happen if more water vapor were introduced into the system? Well, the collision model leads us to expect that with a higher concentration of water molecules, the frequency of successful collisions with carbon monoxide molecules would increase. So in turn, the rate of the forward reaction would increase. As a result, the increase in product concentration would cause a similar increase in the reverse reaction rate. As soon as these rates were equal again, the equilibrium would be reestablished. Do you think that the equilibrium position, that is, the concentrations of water, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide, would be different than when they first reached equilibrium? This question will be answered in a later video, but for now, please note that the equilibrium position, whether it lies to the left, favoring the reactants, or to the right, favoring the products, or somewhere else, is determined by three factors. One of those factors is the initial concentrations of reactants and products, 
and that will be the focus of this series of videos on chemical equilibrium. The other two factors are the enthalpies and entropies of the reactants and products. The effect of these thermodynamic quantities on equilibrium will not be considered at this, at this time. Chemical equilibria and equilibrium positions are governed by the law of mass action. For the generic reaction shown, in which capital A and capital B represent reactants in equilibrium with products represented by capital C and capital D, and the lowercase letters A, B, C, and D are their respective stoichiometric coefficients, the law of mass action is represented by the equilibrium expression shown here. The product of the molar equilibrium concentrations of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the product of the molar equilibrium concentrations of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients is equal to K. K is called the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant is considered unitless and is specific for each reaction at a certain temperature. Can you write the equilibrium expression for this reaction? Since you do not know the equilibrium concentrations, you can only write out the expression, so don't try to calculate a value for the equilibrium constant K. Pause the video now while you write it out, then resume to check your answer. The equilibrium expression for this reaction is written using the law of mass action. The equilibrium constant K is equal to the molar concentration of nitrogen dioxide to the fourth power times the molar concentration of water to the sixth power divided by the molar concentration of ammonia to the fourth power times the molar concentration of oxygen to the seventh power. So did you get it? This video has been an introduction to equilibrium. Please review this video and the appropriate pages in your textbook if you have trouble with the law of mass action or with recognizing systems at equilibrium. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Thank you for your attention. I'll talk to you next time.